let's talk about other things. Accuracy. How many of you really track accuracy on the GMAT? And you really say, I'm practicing this, I'm tracking accuracy. And then sometimes you question, why is it that uh, I got this score and I still don't have a, uh, I got this accuracy and I still don't have as high a score as I anticipated. All right. So I'm going to really talk about this. How many of you asked this question? Uh, how many questions should I answer correctly to score a 90th percentile on a verbal, a quant, or DI? How many of you asked a question such as this? Now, this could be verbal or quant. Or DI. Just two people. All right, quite a few of you. So I'm going to really talk about a chart over here where we'll look at the number of mistakes and the scores that people got here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you these are all verbal sections, but you know, very similar stuff plays uh, on the quant side of things as well. So, uh, so in this in this chart, uh, this person, how many mistakes has this person made on the verbal section? And what do you think is score out of 90 or is percentile score? Is? Let's kind of focus on, on percentile score. Five mistakes. What do you think is percentile score is? 95th, 85th, 85th. Okay, 85th percentile. All right, lots of people. 90th, 91st. All right. So this person made five mistakes and his percentile score was 98th. Person time. Again, keep in mind the position of these mistakes, but let's kind of move forward here. There's another student who, who actually made five mistakes and left this one question unanswered. What do you think his percentile score is? I'm going to clear the poll so that, uh, so that you guys can put that in. Yeah. 80, 85, 75. And for the person who said, you know, how should I build my study plan? We're going to discuss that in about 15 minutes. Uh, uh, all right, 70s. Okay. This person made five plus one mistakes. The one, this one question that he left unanswered. And his percentile score was 19th. One nine. That may be very, very clear. Not 91, but one nine. What does this tell you? How? I, I can help you answer how, but why don't you take a guess? Yes, 19th personnel. You got a V75. You shouldn't leave any questions. Yes, but that wasn't the case. He, he answered some extremely easy questions incorrect over here. Okay, some extremely easy questions. So the test did not even serve him very challenging questions. Okay, so the test won't even serve difficult questions to you. Let's look at this third guy. A ton of mistakes. First two questions were wrong. What do you think? How many mistakes? Percentile. Also put in the number of mistakes. This guy has eight mistakes and his percentile is 70th. Now, you know, he, the first two questions are wrong, but because this wasn't his first section and, 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 and because he started out with more challenging questions, even though he made mistakes early on, those weren't on, on, on hard questions. And, and, and that, those weren't an easy question, and that's what allowed him to get to a 70th percentile despite making these many mistakes. Okay. Let's look at another one here. This is one of our students, and, and uh, uh, I'm going to point out the mistakes that he made. One, two, three, four. Four mistakes here. What do you think? Four mistakes. How, what's the score? When most of you are getting it right, 99th percentile. Okay. This guy uh, who, who, who took the test, uh, who got 99th percentile, took the test for the second time. The first time he made six mistakes, he got a, he got a 51st percentile on verbal. And the second time he, he prepared, he made four mistakes, he got a 99th percentile. Okay. You can really see his CR and RC percentiles as well over here. Okay. So overall, the point here being that the, the, the total number of mistakes, is, it's not a super strong indicator uh, of, of what your score is likely to be. The context is much more important. These are all EG matters, and, and, and you can see that they're overall GFE scores uh, in, in this case. And, uh, and you can really see that the, the correlation between the number of mistakes 
and your percentile score in that particular section is about 0.45. Now, if you add more examples, this will definitely go up to 0. 57 over here to um, so 57%, which again is a reasonably strong correlation, but not a super strong correlation. Um, Satyam Veda has a great question. He says, how do you define what hard is? Is it the complexity or is it being lengthy? That's a great question. Now, there's one simple definition of hard, uh, which is if the question, the accuracy on a particular question is about 40 to 45%, uh, then it's in the hard category. Once it starts to go above 55%, then, then it, it it goes in the medium category. If it's between 45 and, and 55, then it's in the medium hard category. How did Pranoy get 645, even though he had a 19th percentile? How do you think he got it? Great question. Mathematically, how did he, how do you think he got this? It's a great question. Good observation. You're looking at data and, and yes, he asked the other sections. Absolutely. He asked quant, he asked di. Um, and which is where, in, in fact, when we uh, when we saw his score and we looked at his his internal stats, he was um, at about a seventy seventh, seventy fifth percentile or so. So so definitely underperformed on on the focus edition. They actually asked uh, the GMAT to rescore the exam as well, um, and 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 um, they did do that. They really say we're not going to change it. Uh, but but yeah, he underperformed. But this is kind of one of those quirks with the focus edition where where if you make mistakes on on easy questions, it penalizes you. Okay. Uh, fortunately for him, uh, all he wanted was a 645 because he wanted to get into ISB. He got into ISB, and, and, and so he didn't bother to take the test again. Is the person related to number of tests? It, yes, it is. It, it's related to your peers, but it, it's a reasonably constant term. Okay. Now, the key takeaway from this is, again, remember, the first section we talked about what accuracy do you need in medium and hard questions. You want to achieve a certain percentile, and if you want to achieve a percentile, that's 75th percentile or above. You you almost needed a ninety percent accuracy in, in 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 medium questions, and then it was the hard questions that matter. So focus on building that ability to get there, rather than worrying about uh, you know your pure accuracy. How much impact one poor section would have on uh, on 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 the other sections? Slight amount, if at all. So what happens if you have a poor section? Is that uh, is that you you start with easier question on the next section. Now, if you don't make a mistake in those questions, it has absolutely zero impact. But if you start with an easy question and then you make a mistake, then of course, you know, how the GMAT works with easy questions is something that you guys know by now. Then, then, then it has a negative impact here, which is where I would rather be in, in this position here where I'm starting with more challenging questions and, I'm, 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 and even if I get those questions wrong and I would get a 70th percentile because that is an honest evaluation of my ability.